FIGS are first-year interest groups, and this is a program that started in 2001 with a pilot of four FIGS. The idea is that um, a cohort of about 20 students will take several classes together. So this gives students a chance to bond, to ease their transition to campus, but also connects them to faculty because the, the core class that sets the theme or the topic for each FIG is taught by a senior faculty member. And the other aspect of FIGS is that it offers students an opportunity for an integrative learning experience. So the courses of a FIG are all related to one another uh, and are chosen by the professor teaching that core theme class. This fall we are offering 58 different FIGS opportunities. We have FIGS for students in engineering, we have nursing faculty teaching FIGS, we have even a professor from the medical school teaching a FIG on medical imaging. I knew that there was some skepticism on campus from some, you know, from some corners about whether this program was really um, viable here. Was this something that UW-Madison students needed or desired? Would, it be, would faculty be able and willing to participate in a program like this? So I knew right from the beginning that we would need to be gathering data to demonstrate it, whether or not the program was meeting its goals. Was, were we uh, having an impact on student learning, on student achievement? And those things are going to be measured by uh, grade point averages, by retention data. But we also wanted to know what we needed to do to, to help the program evolve and make changes. And that's sort of a formative evaluation. So then we're using a lot of survey data, so surveying students at the end of their uh, semester, surveying faculty, doing focus groups with students, focus groups with faculty. So you get some qualitative information that fleshes out the skeleton that we get from the student achievement data. So what we've been able to demonstrate is that FIG students do outperform non-FIG students. Their, their GPAs at the end of that first semester are quite a bit higher than that of non-FIG students. That kind of information has been very useful uh, in helping us grow this program. See a lot of uh, um, growth with students of color, helping students of color on campus to target minority students, make the transition to this majorly white campus has been a campus-wide goal. And what FIGS has been a very uh, instrumental, I think, in helping many of these students make this transition. So we have programs like CO and AAP and POSSE and people uh, strongly encouraging their students to, be, uh, to participate in FIGS or enroll in FIGS. So, for example, 25 to 30 percent of FIG students every year come from the targeted minority populations. And what we're seeing it mirrors what we see with the general FIG population is that they have much higher GPAs than their non-FIG counterparts. In this data, these data, we've been able to, to get MIU funds. We did an MIU proposal in the first round and we're awarded funds, so, which has allowed us to double the size of the program the, over the last two years. Then the formative aspect of, the, of our evaluation is helped us make changes in how we make, in our process, and how we recruit faculty, and how we recruit students, how we uh, orient students to FIGS, how we orient faculty who are gonna be working with us in FIGS. Luckily, we have um, partnered with uh, Steve Koshik, who works in the People and Pathways programs, and he does a lot of our statistical work with us uh, in developing our, the protocols for focus groups and actually doing the facilitation of focus groups, we've gone to the Office of Quality Improvement and helped, and they've helped us to devise survey questions. And the libraries who, and the librarians will adopt FIGS at the request of faculty, and that's become a really strong element. It's uh, helped faculty immensely with what they're doing. It's helped the students uh, learn the library system. It's helped them delve more deeply into the topics of their FIG. So we have lots of campus partners, both in the assessment part, but also in the production aspects of this program. First of all, consider who all your stakeholders are and involve as many stakeholders as you can in your assessment process because they're gonna give you information, but they also wanna know what you're, what you're doing. Um, make sure that you're gathering information that you're actually gonna use, not just put on a shelf someplace. Have some idea of what you want to accomplish how you want to use the information and then figure out what information is available to you or what you need to gather. The other thing is to remember that there are lots of campus partners who are willing to help um, 
first of all, there are lots of programs who are, that are doing assessment that might provide some modeling or some advice uh, on what they're doing and how they've accomplished it. I would go there. Remember that there are statisticians and people with those skills who might be very willing to help. The other thing is to, to share the results as broadly as you can. Uh, it's one thing to do a great assessment and put it in a binder like this and just put it on the shelf and say, well, I did my assessment for the year, here's my annual report, and you know, maybe three people see it. Um, if what you're doing has broader consequences, share that information, um, brag a little bit about what you're doing, but also demonstrate what's effective about your program that other people might want to be able to use, whether it's your assessment protocol or something specifically in your department, in your programming, that would be useful for other people to know.